Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I've come to a location that I've actually visited, I think, about 10 times, but never in the summer. Normally I come here in the autumn for the, the beautiful autumn leaves. So I thought I'd mix things up a wee bit and uh, come along and see what it's like in the summer. So I'm at the Bucks of Aberfeldy. It's actually quite early in the morning. I think it's about 7 a.m. So we don't have an awful lot of direct light at the moment, which is okay, because uh, that'll allow me to do some uh, long exposures, drag out the, the shutter a little bit. Okay, so this is the first composition. I kind of like this corner here and these beautiful green mosses and obviously the cascade the secondary cascade, which seems a slightly different colour because of the way the light's hitting it. This is the first shot of the morning, I think. And if it's worked at all, I'll pop it on the screen just now. Basically, I've got a portrait orientation. I'm focused on this uh, convenient leaf that just happened to be there, honest. And then I've occluded the pool, the lines and the rocks leading up to the waterfall, and then the waterfall. I've had to try and aim the camera down slightly because I don't want to include the bright sky, which you can see there. Right, what I've done is I've got down even lower and that's allowed me to include um, there's a little orange, see it there, a little orange leaf there as well, which was actually there. But it allows me to include that in the composition as well. We've basically got the orange leaf, these, these green leaves, the pool, the shapes in the rock, and then the waterfall beyond, and just a little hint of the sky. I'm going to finish up with this particular composition involving the pool and move over and see if we can get one or two shots where the, the, the cascade of the waterfall is, is kind of front and centre. What do you think of this composition? This is the image on the back of the camera. As you can see, fortunately, that uh, that little leaf has uh, has been been blown over into the new composition, and that's given me a little bit of foreground interest with those the rocks in the foreground here. And uh, we've got the the cascade there in the background, and we're allowing to have this interesting rock face in the image as well. At the moment, I've got pretty much this, this uh, rock face pretty much central, and the, the waterfall is off to the side. And the reason I'm doing that is there's a, there's a bench there, and I don't particularly want to include that. But what I might do is move round slightly like this, um, move the rock face more to the right, and that'll allow me to make more of the waterfall. And hopefully, still include this uh, this little leaf. Okay, another composition. Um, I've got down really low now. I'm pretty much on the line of the rocks and I'm focusing directly, well, I'm actually focusing on these rocks here, but I'm shooting at F16 to maximize the depth of field and to hopefully give it that kind of 
kind of soft feel that you sometimes get when you've got a, a small aperture like that. I'm still including these falls here, but I might actually exclude them in the next shot and do more of a square crop here. My only problem is that um, that really photogenic little leaf isn't in the shot anymore. Although, oh, it seems to be getting quite quite windy suddenly. Is that cheating? It's not cheating. It's nature. Right, what do you think of this one? I've swapped lenses again. I've got the 20-40-105 millimeter lens on now. And I've gone vertical format. I've focused on the rocks, but I'm still including just a little hint of these, these whiter falls here. And what I've done is I've dropped the aperture. I've really opened up the aperture. I think I'm at f6 or something like that. Let me just check. I'm at f8. And that's allowing me to use a faster shutter speed, which in turn means I'm freezing the water and getting a wee bit more detail in the water. I really like those like, kind of streams of water that are pouring over the edge of this boulder and up there as well. So I'm seeing if I can capture them. Now the downside of doing that is I've got a shallower depth of field, which probably means that the bright background is going to be out of focus. But that's okay, that, that, that might actually help the composition and draw the eye down to the part that is in focus, which is these falls. Yeah, I tell you what, I was really lucky finding uh, with that leaf blowing into my shot all the time. It really gave a bit of a, you know foreground interest, and I, I really hope I can I can get some when I get further up as well, because uh, that 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 certainly helped the compositions quite a bit. So I know there's a waterfall here, but I'm not quite sure where. So I'm just gonna have a look with this fella that's sitting here. Let's see if he knows where they are. So I, I, uh, to a mouse, honestly a mouse, try it. They'll love it, absolutely love it. And uh, i trying to think what else. Haggis, have you ever tried haggis? They want about that, they'd love that, I know. Um, oh, what else? A red, red rose. No, a rose, not a nose, a red, red rose. You'd, they'd like that, I know. Aye, no worries, any time, mate. Just give me a shout. I think it's quite useful to collaborate, so I've, I've just given just given Burns a couple of ideas for a couple of poems he might want to try. It's nice to be nice, isn't it? Anyway, what do you make of these? You think there's a shot here? Well, certainly enough cascades. I could do without that branch. Uh, otherwise, I don't know, I don't know. I might just leave these ones, I've got to come back this way. So I might leave these ones, see if the light's any better when I come back down. Ah, no, you're all right, mate. It's not a problem, just hope, hope they work out for you. Uh, old Lang Syne, there's another one, do that one. Right, I'm at a part where I'm going to stop and get down to the water side here, because we've got this beautiful calm section of the water. You know, these lovely colours in the, in the cliff face there and a couple of uh, cascades. But most importantly, I've just noticed all these mushrooms on that old log there. 
So I'm going to use that as foreground. I'm actually not too far from where it is I'm going to stop and turn around, so this might well be spot number two of three or four. Oh yeah, I'm loving these. I might take a couple of macro shots of them actually as well while I'm at it, because look at the reflections on the, on the mushrooms. But anyway, my plan is to use them as a foreground. That kind of relatively calm area there is a mid-ground, and then the cliff face as a background. I'll probably have to put on the 16 to 35 millimeter lens to get wide enough to, to include these, because I'm very close to them just now. But they're absolutely beautiful. I want to include them. Absolutely 100% want to include them in the shot. While I've, I've got my 24 to 105 lens on, actually, I might take a couple of close-ups of them, and then we'll move to the, the wider shot. A couple of macros coming up. Yeah, now I'm no, I'm no macro photographer, I don't have a clue what makes a good macro photograph, but, uh, but they are seriously photogenic, aren't they? Okay, I've taken them and I've swapped over to the 16 to 35 millimeter lens again, and that's gonna hopefully allow me to get wide enough to include these, and then, uh, yeah, that in the background. Is that not absolutely beautiful? We could really use some direct light, but otherwise that is a beautiful view. Uh, what do you make of that? This is the, the view from the back of the camera. I'm going to uh, change lenses. I'm on the 16 to 35 at the minute. I'm going to put on the 24 to 105 and see if I can zoom in a little bit more in this area, maximise the, the reflections in the water and that uh, fall in the background and its reflection as well and make the most of these beautiful greens and oranges in the, in the side. That is lovely. Right, I've come up onto the rocks now. So I'm including these rocks here as foreground interest. The lovely reflections in the water. Just the bottom of that waterfall up there. And then these uh, beautiful colours in the, the, the wall of the gorge. Looks great. Um, if I sound a little subdued, it's because I've just realised I've, uh, I've lost the foot off my tripod. It's like the fifth time that's happened to me, which is why I'm really annoyed about it. Anyway, thankfully it's happened that often, I've got some spares back home, but it might limit my use of the tripod for the rest of the day. Yeah, so this is one of the points where we've got quite a nice, that's that spirit area that I was shooting earlier. But yeah, you've got quite a nice set of falls here. But the only way to really get them is to set up your tripod 
here on the path and potentially block people's access. Yeah, here's another example. The, the best viewpoint for this particular waterfall is on this very narrow bridge. So if you don't time it right, you end up holding up lots and lots of people. So if you come, I strongly recommend you go further on, follow the stairs all the way up, and that takes you onto a long level part where there are more quite dramatic waterfalls until eventually you reach the, the topmost fall, which is just absolutely spectacular. But as I said, I, I've got other locations to visit, so I just need to turn around here and head back the way I came. These are the falls that I didn't shoot on the way up. I might just head down there, see if there's a composition. There certainly looks to be one there and possibly there. What's that? No, <laughs> I said a mouse, not a louse. Although, actually, do you know what? A louse would be a good one as well. Huh? No, no worries, you're welcome. Yeah, it was that branch, wasn't it, that I didn't like about this one? I think I'll walk a little bit further upstream and see if we can do something with these two up here. Yeah, there might be a shot here. If I can get down low enough to the water, we might have a, a wee long exposure here. Give it a go. Right, I quite like this shot. It's the, the beautiful green reflection on the water just before it tumbles over that little cascade. So what I've done is I've focused on that rock in the foreground. Set an aperture of about, I think it's F13 in my, And that's given me a shutter speed of just over a second. I think it's 1.3 seconds. And uh, that's allowed me to drag out the water but still retain some of the detail in the water. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a nice little intimate landscape. I like that. What's that? I know, bother me. So, a rose, or a nose, a red, red rose, or a red, red nose, it's up to yourself. Uh, a louse, a mouse, a haggis, and something to do with old Lang Syne, if you get the time. Right, cheers, catch you later. Yeah, I definitely think I'm leaving at the right time. <laughs> I just passed families heading up there. Anyway, that's it for the Bucks of Aberfeldy, hope you enjoyed. Give us a little thumbs up if you did. Uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to subscribe to the newsletter. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, bye.